Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Slickmoff and I'm back again with another video and days like these make me so glad that I have the outset of YouTube to give my opinions and I gotta say this Captain America Civil War trailer is one that I really do want to talk about and I love this trailer. I thought the trailer was phenomenal. I wanted to address something that I actually saw from Jason Inman who has his own channel Jawin and it's on this channel. He actually has a lot of dislikes, which I really, you know, don't like. It really bothers me as a content creator myself to see another YouTuber getting dislikes or hated on for their opinion. I think that's ridiculous, but oh, I think a lot of it as well is because he works for DC or, you know, whatever. He's a promoter of DC through DC All Access, etc. So here's the point. In Jason Inman's video, he said that he didn't like about this trailer, how it essentially rehashed the other trailers. And there's a certain level of truth to that because it really didn't get a lot of new um, story aspects. It didn't have a lot of totally new shots. It had extensions of shots. What I mean by that is like the Black Panther swiping a buggy. That was, in my opinion, the money shot. It was the best shot of the trailer. I love that shot. That was the shot that got the best reaction from me. Now, let me just address Spider-Man because as soon as I saw him, you guys may have seen my tweets, I was less than thrilled. I wasn't in love with it. And as I look at the stills more, I become to like it a little more and more. I don't know what it is about it. People may be saying like it's the eyes. I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. I just look at it. It looked off to me when he first came onto the screen. It wasn't that big like, oh my God, it looks amazing moment for me. I was just like, yeah, yeah, that looks kind of bad. <laughs> like, I wasn't sure exactly what I thought at the moment. I was just torn. It wasn't that big payoff moment for me as I was hoping for. Let me just say that. However, to Jason's point, I do concede that this trailer didn't really show a lot of new stuff. However, I will have to say that I disagree with him in the fact that I really actually liked the fact, and I thought it was the strongest aspect of the trailer, that it really didn't show all that much more in terms of plot or narrative or really anything in that facet. All it showed was good money shots. Again, Captain America a little bit more going in close and personal, punching the crap out of Iron Man essentially, and again the money shot with Black Panther swiping it. Bucky, that was an amazing shot as well. But what these Disney movies have shown, and of course for those of you unaware, The Force Awakens in addition to Captain America Civil War are both Disney movies. They're published by Disney. They're marketed by Disney. What the weakness of the Batman v Superman marketing campaign is that there's such a surplus of content that it loses its effect on the actual viewer. The Doomsday trailer, completely unnecessary. It shouldn't exist. And what these movies have shown, both Civil War and Star Wars, which both had two official trailers, that's it. In fact, The Force Awakens really only had one official trailer. This one has two. And even one could say the first trailer is more of a teaser. So these Disney movies have two trailers. Compared to Warner Brothers, they're releasing four or five trailers in addition to like 37 TV spots. What they've shown and what Disney has consistently shown is that The Force Awakens and Civil War, by the way, have more hype than Batman v Superman. That's just an honest to God fact. If you look at Twitter and elsewhere, these movies are getting more traction. I don't think it should be that way. And it is the fact of Warner Brothers solely. It is not that Batman is not popular enough to grab enough attention. That's definitely not the case because he's pretty much the most popular superhero of all time. Superman is the most iconic character in entertainment history. So you have to look at it. It's not the license's fault, okay? It's Warner Brothers. They're not marketing their movie correctly. They're showing too much of everything. They're just showing too much. And what they've shown, what Marvel has shown, is if you make the viewer wait, thirst for new stuff, then you get the viewer, again, thirsty for new stuff. And when that actually comes, it's a big moment and everybody goes crazy for it on Twitter. But when Warner Brothers is dropping a new trailer every other month and a TV spot every week, three times a week, then that new footage disintegrates. It doesn't gain as much traction. I've not heard, you know, like outside of class and such, I've not heard people going crazy about Batman v Superman. I have heard people going crazy about Civil War. And that is solely the purpose and the fault of Warner Brothers. And they should be taking lessons from Disney if they want their movies, such as Suicide Squad, to be at the same level. What they should do is Suicide Squad, release one more trailer, that's it, and don't tell us anything about the plot, and, you know, show a couple of cool money shots, and, you know, but judging by the way this movie's going, is that we've already seen more footage of Suicide Squad, like, seven months out, six months out from the movie than we have with Civil War, and that movie comes out in two months. So it doesn't look like we're going that way. We're probably going to get a ton more trailers that tell us a ton about the story and who the antagonist is, because that's just what Warner Brothers does. They aren't good at marketing movies. That's just my honest opinion. I understand some of you would disagree with that. But if you want to know why Batman v Superman isn't as big as it should be. But what you are seeing is that Civil War at this point, after this trailer, I've seen people on Twitter saying, I'm looking forward to Civil War more than Batman v Superman after today. What we're seeing is that Civil War has shown about half as much footage, but it's seemingly getting twice the amount of hype. And it's even further away than Batman v Superman. 
Batman v Superman has a lot of hype around it. I'm not saying it doesn't. It really, really does. And especially for us DC fans here. But you have to look beyond us. You have to look beyond the YouTube scene. What is the casual viewer looking at? Because that's what they're trying to market to. And really, I think that the casual viewer is looking at Civil War and viewing it as a much more enticing and enthralling experience in the sense that it's shrouded by secrecy, a seeming, you know, attraction to that, I think, with the viewer. Because it worked for The Force Awakens, it worked with Civil War, and it would have worked with Batman v Superman, but they just went a totally different direction, decided to show everything about the movie, seemingly, in terms of the antagonist, and also the big money shots. When I talk about showing the movie, I'm not talking about the big plot points. I'm talking about the money shots. The Trinity standing together. Batman slamming Superman down through the glass roof. That is a money shot. And when you have a campaign like Civil War, which shows four, five, maybe six of those money shots, they are way more exciting than when you have 20 of them. So basically what I'm saying, Warner Brothers, make less trailers, hire less marketing people, do less work, save more money. We guys know you love money over there, Warner Brothers and hype will build for your movie. Remember when the Comic-Con trailer dropped for Batman v Superman, the first full trailer? The hype for that was out of this world. It was number one on Twitter, and I remember watching Good Morning America, and they were even talking about it. Honestly, that trailer was on the same level of hype as both of the Civil War trailers. And then, Warner Brothers got carried away. They over-marketed their movie, they oversaturated the market of their movie, they started releasing a trailer every month, they released a not-so-good trailer, and that wasn't even the problem. The problem was they had more trailers slated. Imagine if all they released was the Comic-Con trailer, and then they showed the fourth trailer. The one with Batman kicking ass at the beginning. That's your big money shot there. And then that's it. You don't get any more. So all that stuff with Doomsday cut out. The Trinity standing together cut out. That's all gone. We don't know that any of that happens. And quite frankly, we don't see Superman walking into Congress. Like, all those shots are gone. All you get is... You think that Superman's shooting at Batman, you don't get reaffirmed that Doomsday's in the movie, and it's actually Doomsday doing that, and you get Batman kicking ass, so we learn that Batman's a badass, and we learn that Batman and Superman are going to try to kill each other. That's it. That's the marketing campaign. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that Batman v Superman would be way bigger up on social media and hype and everything. But as I mentioned, it's almost like it's, it's not where it should be, and I blame Warner Brothers, not the movie or the license. So... This video turned into a rant about Batman v Superman, as some of my videos have, but you guys know I'm not pleased with the marketing campaign for the movie, I just don't think it's very good. It's been oversaturated, the market has been oversaturated, and Warner Brothers themselves are the only ones at blame for this movie, because the movie's great, we've seen reviews coming in, and it's not like we have nothing left to see of the movie. A new review, or a new uh, post from somebody said that there's four to five unseen, like super crazy, spoilery things that we've not seen anything in the trailer like cameo appearances or events in the plot or, you know, as such. So there's going to be a lot to see in the movie, don't get me wrong, but all I'm saying is that Civil War has shown half of the footage and they've been twice as effective. So DC, take notes.